Paul Bess. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. This evening I rise to read into the record um, a heartfelt response to the shock that was sent through the West Coast community last week when the Threatened Species Scientific Committee uh, launched a report in regards to the Morgean Scape. And I'd just like to read a letter I received from Linton into the Hansard. Hi. Thank you for taking the time to read this. I'd like to keep it short, but I'm not going to, as this matter will affect the lives of so many in my community. The above photo is the view from my office. It's a nice day today, no wind or rain, so I can see all the way down the harbour with a nice old sailing boat on its way back to Strawn. I feel that I live and work in the most beautiful place on earth. Yes, I am the manager for Huon's Western Region, but I'm also part of the Strawn community <coughs> for the last four years. I came from a town in southern Tasmania. My parents died when I was really young, so I got handed around from family member to family member, and then on to friends. All outlooks for me and my brother was that we would be no hopers and never get anywhere in life. This was up till the point that I was lucky enough to start work at Fish Farm where the workers treated me like family and helped me sort out my stuff. Then I switched over to another company. This was the, where things really started to happen. I'm not sure what they saw in me, but they invested in me so much effort and time to train and upskill me to become a better leader. And now, under the control of JBS, they're investing even more in me, not only in me, but my whole team of 31 people. The town of Strawn relies heavily on the local fish farmers through the winter months, as very few tourists visit the area and most workplaces need to shut down as it's just not viable to stay open without the support of our local workers spending money in the area. For instance, of my 31 workers, I can find at least 20 of them at Molly's, our local takeaway store, each morning buying a yeah. coffee and lunch. The fish farms were also heavily involved with local sporting groups such as football clubs and golf clubs. The town needs such activities as there's not much else to do during winter and it keeps everyone sane and able to socialise. Strawn used to have a cricket side, but when all the lockdowns came from COVID, that closed down and they haven't been able to get it up and running again. As for the skate, I'm a little hesitant on the signs. We see many people still catching them down at the local wharf, so I'd wonder if some more effort needs to be put into looking in other spots within the harbour. We will always need construct control sites, but as most people in the world are aware, fish swim, and it could be migrating into a different area of the harbour. I have no doubt in my mind that fin fish farming has an effect on the surrounding environment. I'd be crazy to think anything else, but to the extent that it is being portrayed in the media that it's just completely false and that it's the consensus of just about all of the local strong community that the fish farms and their workers are being put out to be villains and cowboys and environmental pests, just out to wreck everything. But this is so far from reality. And if people really got to understand what we do and the effort that workers put into everything we do to the highest possible standard, not only to help our fish, but the native animals and the coastlines, maybe they'd appreciate us more. Things like the use of seal crackers and other deterrents that have potential to hurt or affect animals. I'm super proud of saying that on my farm in the Hue and Western region, we've not used a single crack or bean bag or trap on any animal, and that's the way it will stay, no exceptions. There are so many factors that could be contributing to the decline of the state, skate, although I'm not convinced. Have they declined to the extent that it's been stated? Last year, being La Nina, was so much different. There was very little flow from the dams. Then they allow huge amounts of salt water to enter the harbour. And this is clear to see what we have had some very good recharge events. Hydro are able to change the entire environment so easy and it's so clear to see when they do a release, whether they do it through the Gordon, nice dark water that has a cooling effect, or through John Butters. This flows down through the King River and it's almost glowing in the dark from the amount of contaminants in it. We know the second they do this is the fish don't like it and it puts them off their feed. Now, the big elephant in the room that involves the Meramictic Lakes, three of which are nestled next to the Gordon River and in the World Heritage Area, I ask, what's the health of these? I can tell you they're dead. Thanks to the flow rates Hydro have exposed the river to for so many years, these are much smaller but very similar to Mac Harbour, as they need to be recharged by salt water. And this has not been able to happen due to the amount of fresh water coming down and restricting salt water from going up into the river. I ask how many species have been lost here? 
Well, who knows? I can say that the demise of these lakes had nothing to do with the fish farms. I hope we can save the skate and a breeding program is a step towards understanding them. However, this should, have been in, this should be done in Strawn and not taken away from the town and put in a big city. It's our skate for me and my kids and their kids for them to be able to see for the years to come. My biggest concern is for my family and my workers and their families and if the decision to reduce stocks or take them out of the harbour, how would that affect me? I'd no longer have a job. I don't know what else I could do. I have farmed fish all my life. My son, who is 18, also works for me. He's just become a fully qualified diver and absolutely loves his job. What do I tell him? I have people working for me that are the sole income provider with families of five kids. What do I tell them? Sorry, mate, you need to starve this week. I have another guy who's worked on this site for 32 years. What do I tell him? Sorry, mate, you wasted your life with us. What do I tell the multiple families who have settled and live on the West Coast and need this job to keep food on the table? Sorry, guys, you're going to have to leave your family and friends. These are the conversations I'll need to have with my staff and their wives and, sadly, their kids if you go ahead and make a call to basically shut us down. Nobody wants to see anything go extinct. That's why we do the work together and we need to find a solution together. Yes, the state is a huge issue, but please also take into account the mental health of my staff and their family. Yep, Strawn is the Wild West and it's full of manly men that pride themselves on being the provider. And I will say, talking to the people here, it's like go back in time. You can imagine the effects not being able to support your family, the effects that that will have on them. People will lose their homes. Airbnbs have taken over the market here, so renting is just not on the table. Suicide rates will most definitely rise. Drugs are almost unseen, at least here in Strawn. No jobs will turn into creating a drug issue. I've seen this firsthand in southern Tasmania. Thank you for taking the time to read this, and I hope this helps your decision. Sorry if I jumped around a bit, Minister but this is expired. very important to me, and I'm passionate Minister about Ogilvy. it, and I worry about it every day. From Linton.